Big plans for the new year? Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a unique website. Showcase your work, blog, or publish content, even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks. You can customize everything from look and feel to settings and products using beautiful templates created by world-class designers. And there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code PFT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Are you a fan of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or Atlanta or New Jersey or any Bravo shows in general? If your answer is yes, or even if your answer is no, what? I haven't seen those shows. Then Bitch Sesh, a Real Housewives breakdown is still the show for you. Every week, hilarious hosts Casey Wilson and Danielle Schneider dish on the season's wildest moments, answer your burning Housewives questions, drink Housewives branded wine, and bring on some super special guests like Lauren Lapkus, Adam Pally, June Diane Raphael, and more. Seriously, even if you're not a Housewives fan, this show will still become one of your favorites. Listen to Bitch Sesh every week on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome everyone under this roof, under these twin chandeliers. <laughs> what a privilege it is to be under such fancy lighting. Lighting no Dilbert will ever experience. <laughs> that poor benighted off throne. He's under fluorescent lights all day. Messes his tie up. Is that, is that him? Is that him? <laughs> Cartoon characters. Something about these guys. If my life were that consistently fucked up, hey, you'd never hear from me again. Why? Would I kill myself? No, that's a mortal sin. I would drop out of society. I would pursue a life like the Tom Cruise character in the latter half of the film Cocktail. I'd go to some Caribbean resort. I'd make, I'd learn to make the drinks that people that go to these places like. Uh, high, high in alcohol content, packed with sugar. They come in a decorative glass. Sometimes you get to keep it. Think about that. You get to keep the glass. What a scam this is. They get us to wash their glasses? Forever? What kind of weird monkey's paw arrangement is this? It seemed like the perfect crime. I get to keep the glass, but then I am responsible for its maintenance forever. When I was a kid, you know, I used to give away free glasses, gas stations. They'd have like, uh, you know, I don't know, Bugs Bunny, the Roadrunner, shit like that. <laughs> we all thought it was great, you know. Mom, mom, dad, dad, take us to the gas station, we get the glass. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I, I think back on myself as a child, I think, what a stupid asshole. kid was here right now, I tell him, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you moron. <laughs> has, has someone made a movie, like a time travel movie, where someone goes back, sees their younger self, and just berates them? <laughs> oh. Ladies 
ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to have a free-form conversation with me inspired by a blind question from a previous episode's guest. Then, I invite some improviser pals onto the program to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes, oftentimes utilizing details gleaned from the conversation with the aforementioned special guest. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Evan Schletter. what he goes like. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to provide you tonight with improvisers imported from the state of California. <laughs> First up, please welcome Eugene Cordero! Oh. <laughs> it was a mistake. It was a mistake. Bad move. Bad move. <laughs> Bad move. For the listener, Eugene and I twirled around. Yeah. And you know, we here's what our mistake was. We did not pick a fixed point. We didn't spot. We didn't spot. <laughs> For all you dancers like us out there, we did. We got too excited about you know doing the show. And Where we are our fellow dancers? <laughs> we didn't spot. That's right. Black Where, Swan. Yeah. I didn't. Yep. And I'm I'm dizzy. I, I it it's takes me a second. Me. Yeah, it's, it's taking a second, but Eugene, that was enough. Are you a dancer? Huh? Um, <laughs> I, what does that mean? I like to dance. Yes. Was there a period? Yes. Where, where I you wanted to be a, a dancer? Yes. Absolutely. Um, many times. Uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted to be in like, I was, I wanted to be in an R&B group a, a with crew. my buddies. A crew. I, I wanted to be in Joe to see your boys to men or something. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to check, check, check. There I am. Hello. Am I here? No, you're here. Oh, God. I can see you. Okay. Can, oh, yeah. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, no, I can okay. see you. All right. I can see you. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, me and my four buddies, we would try to like hang out together and sing harmonies. Uh-huh. Um, and like, yeah, well, wear silk shirts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's did you, what you did. Did you choreograph routines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. So like, yeah, we sang R&B. And then, and then like when the Jabberwockies, you know, became this huge thing too. That was a leap. That's an, when everybody was breakdancing, that's another thing where I'm like, man, I want to do that too. And did you? I, I mean... How far did you get with breakdancing? I, I watched it. <laughs> I watched it and enjoyed it, and then just went like, cool, cool. <laughs> you never tried? Like, no, no, no. Why not? Uh, I mean, I well, I mean, I didn't try publicly. publicly. I right. tried privately, yeah. Sure. I didn't mean, why didn't you put on a show? <laughs> wow. Well, uh, I thought that's what you meant. Like, hey, you know what? I'm into this. I've got a show next week. <laughs> the pressure will make me work harder. Yeah, yeah. Now, you and your four buddies, did you have any public performances? Um, I, well, school talent shows, things like that? Not school talent shows. The, um, the Filipino community in Michigan is pretty big. Sure. Um, so there's like a lot of like random Filipino functions, <laughs> uh, bowling events. Not a bad name for a dance crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the stage, random Filipino functions. I'm going to call him up. <laughs> get the band back together. Change the name, but get the band back together. What was the name before? We didn't have one. You never even had a name? No, 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 no. All right, so random Filipino functions. Random Filipino, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and we would sing like the national anthem or something. <laughs> like something like that. Uh, or like, I remember one time we sang um, Christmas songs at one of like the like holiday events. Sure. But we did like all, like we tried to do the Boys to Men album that they came out that was Christmas, right. and that shit was hard. 
It was hard, man. <laughs> Anybody try to hit them Wanye notes, you know what I mean? I don't know who I'm looking at. Like, <laughs> like Wanye from Boys to Men is going to be in the back going even... like, <laughs> nobody can hit my notes. <laughs> he's got a drink. <laughs> drink and he's retired. <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about? When you did the national anthem, though, you didn't do any moves, right? You just no, 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 did, yeah, like, we just sweet, tight harmonies. Yeah, yeah, we did the whole like hold the ear. Mm. <laughs> you know, like like we were like we were like a you know R and B like a smooth R and B, and I think all of us were holding the ears on the side where everybody was. <laughs> so it's like, what are you here? What are you drowning? Are we trying to? What do you do this for? <laughs> when you plug one ear when you're singing, why? Do you, do you not know why? No, it's so. Because <laughs> anytime, anytime I've done it, I'm like, but well, then how am I gonna? So I'm like, so then I'll like do it on the opposite side. And I'm like, this ain't, this is not helping. Like it doesn't help. It's so, it's so you can hear yourself better. So you're hearing like a muffled version of the person mm -hmm. next to you. Okay, so I'm doing you it can... now. <laughs> So I'm hearing a muffled version of you. Right, but, then but you I can hear, hear like, yourself louder. Yeah, but it's like that weird echoey me. It's like me well, underwater. That's, that's fun. Yeah, but then that's, that's not what I sound like. I don't sound that's like That's what it. you sound like underwater. I don't sound like this. I don't We're off to a great start. Doing a great job. What's up? <laughs> Hello, my friends. My microphone is rejecting this this time. Hello. Tony, hi. Hi. What's going on? Tony, how many times have you been to the city of New York? Um, I don't know. Maybe like 15? How Does about the sound? borough of Brooklyn? Ooh, probably also 15. <laughs> Like, I mean, you're not coming to New York if you don't go to Brooklyn, right? Am I right, folks? <laughs> no. That was sad. Uh, yeah. Now, you've been a singer but for quite some time. Yeah, probably did, before I was doing other stuff. Right. Did you have, so in high school, did you have like a little group? Were you a little solo performer? Oh, well, I was not a solo performer. I was in the Select Singers and the Triple Trio. We were a little Select Singers, what up? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what is the triple trio? Is that nine people? It is nine women only. Basically, we took the women from the select singers and we said, we just want no bass parts, so <laughs> now we are the triple trio and we did like competition, like dumb, like Baroque arrangements of choral singing. It was like the most static time <laughs> in my life. <laughs> Are these like madrigals and things yeah, that you do? Yeah, kind of madrigal, and then we'd sort of do like sad, folky music a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, the water is wide. <laughs> you know that one? <laughs> I cannot <laughs> get o'er. And neither have I wings to fly, you know. It's a Oh, classic. sure, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Carrick Fergus. Who? Carrick Fergus. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I was in Carrick for girls. Yeah. Only for days and nights. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> well, I have something to say about that. Yes, please. Was yes. I wrong? No, 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 you're not wrong. I think people do whatever they want to do with it. But when I was taught, like, why singers do that, it's so that you can cup your hand so that your sound comes back. So you don't actually plug this ear. That's why you get the little, someone really, I blew their mind out there. They're like, fuck. It, I punctured my own eardrum and I didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> but it does help. I told it you, does help. I did that at one of your shows. I told you that. You were singing that Skyfall song? Yes. Which what the I fuck love. are you laughing at? Yeah, right? I sang the shit out of that song. Yeah, man. Yeah, take that, uh, Shirley Bassey? 
Earth yeah. Kit? Who sang that one? That was one? Adele. That was, that was Adele? Skyfall, yeah. Also, how old and British am I that I thought it was Shirley Bassey? She you know, can't Shirley Bassey. Famous Welsh singer. Anyway, um, uh, I did it at your show because you started singing that song, and I was like, whoa, that's, that note is really high. Wait, how high is that note? So I need to like test it for myself. So I'm in the audience of your show being like, Skyfall. <laughs> Testing it out. I looked crazy, but you know, it gave me greater respect for your vocal range. <laughs> that's only that's the only way people can arrive at that respect. <laughs> yeah. Is by making themselves look insane. Yeah, pretty much. The select singers, were they they were a group they were a group in the school or something? Yeah, we okay. were in the school. And then the, the triple tri- <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> We definitely had to be in school to be in the, the, the thing. It was a choir. school organization. Yeah. Okay. That's that's what I'm driving. At. It was it was like school. I'm not choir. a truant officer and I'm trying to catch you. <laughs> Sorry. But then the triple yeah. trio. Yeah. We were also in the school because we were the same. No, I know. <laughs> I know. But you guys formed your own group, right? I or mean no? it was all like teacher like they did it. Oh, okay. They, someone told us stand here and make these noises. So <laughs> There was no like ingenuity. No, I didn't have like a little garage band or anything. I should have. Yeah. That would have been a cooler growing up other than like trying out and not getting on the golf team and doing rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never convince these people that it wasn't cool that you did rodeo. I don't know. He just asked, the last show he asked me so many questions about rodeo. I really did. I felt like it was that laugh of like, you know, what's the opposite of a recognition laugh? <laughs> what's a laugh that's like, we're not sure about this. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, it was my childhood. It was weird for me too, I was black. <laughs> uh, for the listener, Ms. Newsom is still black. Yeah. <laughs> Tawny Newsom, ladies and gentlemen. No water this time. Ladies, gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Little Janet Varney! There she goes. Janet? Yeah? Let's get right into it. Okay. What choral groups were you a part of as a child? Paul, uh, I wasn't part of a choral group. Um, I did do a lot of singing at home. I did play classical guitar from the age of uh, 11. Um, Really? I did. 11? Yeah. Why? I did not know that. Well, that's because it has not come in handy. (laughs) I guess you think like when you get stopped, you know, for a speeding ticket, you can bring out your classical guitar. (laughs) Hey, how about this? Malaganya. Uh, was that a song, Malaganya? Mm-hmm. How does that go? You know what? It, you, you, I, you know it. You know it. May I? It goes like... <laughs> it goes like... Dun, 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 of the little like uh, the east the e strings at the top you really have to kind of do a little finger walk you're like nee, 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 nee. <laughs> <laughs> clearly an expert was this what, was this something that you wanted to do or something that was suggested to you to do it, it was <laughs> it was fair something question. I wanted to do no it was something i wanted to do it was part of uh, the the public school that i went to this the four, five, six grades um, had an after-school program for kids like me whose parents were home late, and uh, home and they late? had all. <laughs> <laughs> that well, seems horrible to <laughs> single these people out. <laughs> Have a group for the kids? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> This horrible part of me keeps wanting to go, Paul, look at me. You think my parents were homely? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) For parents who were home late? Sure. Um, Because of affairs. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 
It's one or the other, Paul. It's one or the other. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, so that was one of the electives that we could that we could take, and I, I did. I was excited about it, and I did take it. And then I, as I sort of moved away from the classical genre and uh, <laughs> learned how to play chords and stuff, then I would, like, write sappy, really, you know, heart-sick songs when right. I was in college. And, um, like, I might have played at a cafe or two. <laughs> really? Like an, an open mic situation? Sarah McLachlan. <laughs> Heavy, right, absolutely. Really leaning on her hard. You would bring like filthy dogs to <laughs> sit from the stage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Music sounds so much more beautiful and sad if you have a sad absolutely. animal nearby. Absolutely. To really drum up the emotions. <laughs> yeah. What? And of course, we've talked about it before on the show, uh, the many hymns that you knew from yes. your days as a Mormon. Yeah, that was the that was the upshot of yeah. having to go to church with my mom. Yeah. What was the song that your grandmother loved? <laughs> Say. It's a song about, it's like an Easter song for when Jesus comes back. And it's, right. You're speculating. It's a speculative song yes. about what that will be like. And what is the name of it again? I believe it's I Wonder When He Comes Again. Right. And it's like, I wonder when he comes again, if he'll do this, if yeah. he'll say this. Yeah. If it's more about like... what will happen around him, to be honest with you. It's like, will other people respond this way? Right. You know. How's it going again? <laughs> I wonder when he comes again, will herald angels sing? Will <laughs> earth be white with drifted <laughs> snow, or will the world no spring? I wonder if one star will shine far brighter than the rest. <laughs> if the actual song ends that abruptly, it would be my favorite song. You gotta always be ready for him. He could be here any moment. <laughs> so there's a lot of abrupt stops in it, just in case. And then you continue. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's a song about Jesus in the future. There are also songs about Jesus in the past. Yeah, we don't get into those very much. Oh. Yeah, it's all we're, it's a very forward-thinking religion. Well, some it's I mean, way ahead of its time. Some of us, some of us got into those songs. Yeah. Like songs that were wondering. They were like conversational songs where you'd right. be talking to someone else. Like sure. Hey. And you'd ask them something like, yeah, like, oh, hey, nice to see you. Yeah. Oh, it's been cool. I got a question for you. Yeah. yeah. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes. It causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a break. <laughs> We will interview our special guest and reveal his or her identity. Stay alive no matter what occurs. I will find you. <laughs> hey, Frankie Valley here. You guys have heard me talk about the Jersey Boys, but have you ever heard me talk about movement? MVMT, you know, those two college dropouts that started their own watch company. It's crazy how fast this company has grown. Almost as crazy as they called me when I said I had the secret to eternal life. More on that later. Now with almost 2 million watches sold in 160 plus countries, movement continues to revolutionize fashion to the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. Much like my elixir that grants people eternal life is very affordable if you follow my instructions. They have even doubled their number of watch dials and are now selling high-quality sunglasses and women's bracelets. So far, they don't seem to be selling the amulets that would contain the elixir that would grant you eternal life. More on that later. And you thought gift-giving was all over after Christmas. Surprise, Valentine's Day is coming up. Did you know about that? 
It's February 14th this year, and our friends at Movement have put together the perfect interactive gift guide to make Valentine's shopping painless. As painless as putting an amulet full of my elixir around your neck and never taking it off to live forever. Whether you're shopping for him or her, find everything from watches to fashion forward bracelets and sunglasses in Movement's limited edition gift box. All curated by Movement's in-house stylists and their trendiest, with their trendiest and with their, well, all curated oh, my, my amulet is missing, way to go. All curated by Movement's in-house stylist with the trendiest pieces that your special someone will love. Where's that ambulance? Uh, call to action. Get 50% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash pft. That's mvmt.com slash pft. Join the movement. Where's my ambulance? Here's space, there's space, round space, square space. Support for today's show comes from Squarespace. Are you ready to start your new business? I'm sorry, there's more. Why wait until the new year to set your plans in action? Well, look, 2019 is just around the corner, right? Are you going to wait till then? The future is coming. Make it brighter. Not too bright, not where you have to wear shades. A little bit below that with Squarespace. With beautiful templates created by world-class designers, Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a new and unique website. Let's say you have an idea for a website where uh, you want to sell, I don't know, um, i use the Halt and Catch Fire uh, example, always a rare comic book. You can make a store about it on Squarespace and you won't break up a marriage. I'm catching up on Halt and Catch Fire. With beautiful templates created by world-class designer, Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a new and unique website. Showcase your work, blog, publish content, even sell products like a rare comic book and services of all kinds like a comic book finding service in just a few clicks. The distance of measurement we use in Vietnam? No. The mouse. My gentle soul. <laughs> Can't catch me, Scott Ackerman. You can customize everything from look and feel to settings and products and it's all optimized for mobile right out the box. Use Squarespace's analytics to help you grow in real time. Start the clock. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Though, if you do have a question, okay, real talk, guys. We, have, we like to have fun, but listen to this. If you do have a question, Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support is there to help, okay? I had to drop, I, I had to go mask off for that. A dream is just a great idea that doesn't have a website yet. <laughs> That's what my grandma used to say. Make it a reality with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code PFT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website in your domain. That is squarespace.com. Offer code PFT. I landed. Welcome back to Spontaneous. My friends, it gives me great pleasure to welcome back to the show a guy we haven't seen for quite some time, but now we're on his turf, and we'll see how things go. <laughs> Please welcome the front man for at least one secret high school band, <laughs> Mr. David Reese. <laughs> That wasn't better. David, please have a seat. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. David, thank you so much for being here. Man, I'm fucking stoked. Hearing all that music and singing and you were doing Paul Robeson. <laughs> he's, he's one of my heroes. That was amazing. You like a hymn or two, right? Yeah, I do. What's your favorite? <sighs> um, Don't you say bringing in the sheaves. I like Ray Fon Williams' arrangement of Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. Yeah. Old school Episcopalian Anglican hymn. Yeah. And what's the gist of that one? <laughs> Life is a highway, man. Just have fun. <laughs> Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence, you know? 
What are some of the lyrics? Let all mortal flesh keep silence and in fear and trembling stand. Jesus. Yeah. God. It's hard. He comes hard. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> Were you guys talking about... Sorry. No, go ahead. Were you guys talking about your history in a cappella singing groups? Is that what was going on? There was a little talk of that, okay. yes. I was in a barbershop group. <laughs> what? <laughs> so before, one of the reasons I'm in such a great mood is before the show started, Evan and I were comparing the Bay Area punk scene of the late 80s to the Chapel Hill indie rock scene of the early 90s. And uh, I had this magical summer. It was the summer after my freshman year in college. And um, it's just when Chapel Hill was getting a lot of attention for its indie rock scene and people thought it was going to be the next Seattle. Mm. And that summer was incredible because it was the summer that I came home from my first, sem first year in college and my friend and I decided to join the Hilltop Harmonizers, <laughs> which was a Chapel Hill-based <laughs> barbershop group that rehearsed in the Methodist Church on Franklin Street. <laughs> and uh, we, would go, we would go to barbershop practice, and then I would get, walk down the street to the Cat's Cradle, which was a local rock club, and they would have $2 Tuesdays, and it was like for $2 you would see like Super Chunk, Archers of Loaf, Polvo, it was just like insane. It was the most musical, magical summer. Anyway. Hold on a second. <laughs> Wait, I feel like you pivoted away from the barbershop group well, very quickly. Barbershop is famously a gateway drug for atonal math rock. I mean, everybody knows that. <laughs> What, was it a classic quartet? That no, you it was a. It was more. It, it was a bunch of guys. It, it, my, it was my friend Andrew and I, and, and we loved the harmonies and in, in barbershop singing, and so we joined. And it was one of those things where we're, we were. We must have been what eight, 19 years old, and so these 50 and 60 year old guys were like, "Young blood, let's get it started. Like the future of barbershop has arrived. This is incredible." Like, Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to teach you our ways, teach you our customs, teach you our heritage. You're going to be in the, sh the live show that we're going to do at the high school auditorium. It was amazing. We learned, uh, don't go in the lion's cage tonight. You know that one? It's like, no! What? <laughs> don't go in it the was lion's so, it cage was so, tonight! I'm really getting... Uh, it makes me so happy to think about that time in my life because I was peeking. Like, it was just so incredible. Like, barbershop... For real, barbershop music is, has a reputation as being so corny and kind of very, you know, uh, not cool. But some of those harmonies are so rich and so beautiful. And some of the songs are so insane. Yeah. Like, Don't Go in the Lion's Cage Tonight is, like a lot of barbershop songs, a song about death. A, a, a song about prevent, preventable tragedy. This idiot. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> this complete fucking idiot decides to break into the lion cage at night. Huge mistake. Like, <laughs> and so the song is like, the song is devoted to making sure that never happens again. Like, it's and incredible. It, it's just it like, tells the story of this guy. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it says, and, don't and, do this. Yeah, exactly. It's you know, in barbershop music, there's a it's a huge intersection between novelty songs and barbershop songs, and so you have these beautiful, complex harmonies, coupled with the most inane, crazy, <laughs> crystal meth short story lyrics of all time. You know, like, yeah, songs about the first Oldsmobile. Uh, <laughs> Guy got an Oldsmobile, he's king of the town, running around in his Oldsmobile. It's, it's, anyway. Sorry. Are you familiar with the musical The Music Man? <laughs> of course. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I li that's my favorite musical. Oh, really? Yes, it is. I'm Guys and Dolls for Life. Guys Are you really? Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys and Dolls for me. <laughs> Sit down, you're rocking the boat. That song Undeniable. Is, is so exhilarating. Mm. You know, when they're doing the thing, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're yeah. rocking the bone, sit down. Sit down. I mean, it's oh, goosebumps. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> to me, it's, it, to me, that is the, the American, the genius of the American musical 
the, the exuberance and the life and the, and the mix of high and low and all that stuff. I mean, when he's talking about, it's incredible. Sit down and rock on the boat. Again, another morality play. That's right. Classic, just good common sense advice. That's right. Delivered in this, in this beautiful melodic context. I can't be beat. By a person who's lying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> David, I have a question for you. Okay. This comes from our previous episode's guest who has interesting handwriting. <laughs> David, name three celebrities you would recruit to your post-apocalyptic survival team, and why? Wow. First, first question that ever got applause. Um, I guess I need to eat, I need to have shelter, and I need to kill. Yes. <laughs> what? So... What? To, to eat, uh, I guess I would need a celebrity chef. It's celeb, but because it's celeb. Right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So which celebrity chef would taste the best when I cannibalize them? Wait, what? Right. Hold on, it's sick. Hold on, it's sick. Right. It's Emerald. <laughs> Emerald. So that's the first one. Emerald. You think? You think Emerald would taste better? Oh my God, yeah. Then uh, what? Italy, the Italy guy. Who's that guy? Oh, Mario Batali. Yeah, Mario Batali. No, he's so Mario Batali is what? Okay, okay. <laughs> you want to hear my amazing three-second Mario Batali story? Sure, I do. In honor of the late great Liz Smith, only in New York, kids, only in New York. When I went to go see Avatar on IMAX 3D. Mario Batali was sitting directly behind me. <laughs> Only in New York, kids. <laughs> Only in New York. Uh, no, I think I think I think Emerald would taste a lot better than Mario Batali. Uh, okay, right. but well, you know, it's it, it's whatever your interpretation of the question is. <laughs> right, exactly. So, do you think that do you foresee Emerald cooking for you before you eventually eat him? <laughs> this, this is the great irony of this post-apocalyptic situation, which. Right. Uh, which is the running subtext in Cormac McCarthy's The Road, which is that a man spends his entire life cooking for others only to then be cooked and eaten by me. <laughs> how, Sorry. How would you kill Emerald, do you think? Because I have a follow-up question. I wouldn't, I wouldn't kill him. I would only cook and consume him once he was dead. I would be ethical about oh, it. Oh, okay. Think, yeah. All right. Yeah. So then maybe you like stove his head in with a rock and then you go like, bam. No, I wouldn't do that. But if that was to happen to him. Right. Yeah. Then I would do it. I would cook him. Because right. I, I, I hate food waste. <laughs> sure. It's a sin. It is a sin. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Emerald. And then for shelter. Celebrity architect. <laughs> I mean, is I am is I am Pay still alive, or is I don't know. Does anyone know if I am Pay is still alive? Nobody. <laughs> no one knows if I am Pay is still alive. <laughs> People even know who I am. Who's Pei got eyes is? on I am Pay? <laughs> um, all right, I uh, put him as I. I need a, a known living architect. <laughs> Philip Johnson is dead. Oh, um, I'm sorry. That's okay. I wasn't a fan of his buildings. That doesn't. Um, uh, I don't know. Who are the hot? Who? Frank Gehry. Is he dead? <laughs> I, got, I got one. Rem Cool House. I'll bring Rem. Rem Cool House. He'll make me a funky, funky shelter. Okay. Yeah. Probably charge, probably charge me a pretty penny. To myself. What do you think you would have to trade him? If we're saying where there's no more money, you know, it's now just a barter, barter system. Yeah, I would imagine it would be right. Bitcoin yeah, is yeah. still going to be a thing. No, Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin will go. <laughs> uh, what would I give him? I would. Um, I don't know. I would. Uh, I would. I, you know, I'd sing for him. I would sing him a, a song. There you go. Yeah. What song would that be? 
Uh, that's, I mean, I would sing... Um, Sweet Adeline? <laughs> no, I would want it to be something that did justice to the gravity of the situation that we found ourselves in. You know, like... Th it's, it's, Do it's, go into the lion's cage tonight? Right, might as well go into the lion's cage tonight. <laughs> Fuck it, like, you know? Uh, no, I don't know what I would sing. I think I would sing in honor of my conversation with Evan. I would probably just sing some, like, bleak Black Flag song. Yeah. Like, you know... <laughs> Police story, or uh, no, sing TV party because that's up because that's uh, right, that's a kind of an upbeat song and, yeah. it, and it harkens back to uh, the best thing about that song. <laughs> this is on uh, Black Flag's best album, Damaged, and this was like their weird, uh, semi ironic attempt to have a hit pop song. So they wrote this song called TV Party about how much they just want to watch their favorite show, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Have a couple of brews. That's right. And then, but when you listen to it, the songs that they're referencing really dates it because it's like Benson, <laughs> Three's Company. It's, like, it's incredible. I would sing that. I okay. would sing that to Rem right. House, and then he would build me my skyscraper. <laughs> Sky skyscraper. Yeah, I want to because I got to be up way high to see him. He's, you know, survey the state of play. As sure. It were. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and then finally, who will you get to kill? <laughs> For killing purposes, Typhoid Mary. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I mean, obviously, I get it. Right. <laughs> but we're so worried if I am Pay is still alive. <laughs> I, I, I hate to be the one to tell you. I, right. I believe she's passed okay. on. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who celebrity. I don't know what celebrities are effective killers or murderers. You got George Zimmerman. <laughs> I'm not giving that guy work. Fuck that guy. I'm not giving him work. Uh, I don't know. I, maybe I wouldn't have someone. To, maybe I wouldn't have someone. I want to. I want to change the categories of celebrities that I'm looking for. Obviously, I still want okay. food and shelter, but instead of killing... Let's say I, defense. What's that? Let's say defense. Defense. Yeah. I would say, def you know, no, because it, in a, one of the challenges in a post-apocalyptic society is going to be rebuilding that which was worth preserving in the first place. True. And that, and you know, <laughs> the onset of the apocalypse, the great tragedy in addition to the loss of human life is going to be the loss of the things that define our humanity. Mm -hmm. And that is not just these basic necessities like food and shelter, but the arts and, you know, the values of, of the Enlightenment and the Renaissance and things like that and, and, and uh, high-minded discourse and conversation. The art of good conversation is going to be one of the first things to go in the event of the apocalypse. So I think for I'm going to choose a celebrity who would still provide stimulating conversation <laughs> and that is the American philosopher Martha Nussbaum. And she will be, it'll be me, Emeril... <laughs> <laughs> Ram Kulhas and Martha Nussbaum, and we'll, we'll get it sorted. We'll, uh, <laughs> it'll, it'll work out. <laughs> now I can't wait for the apocalypse. David Reese, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Stay right there. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a break. During the break, we will procure a location for our improv from our guest, David Reese. And then when we come back, we're going to do that improv. <laughs> All this. When Spontaneous Nation returns! Oh boy. I can't believe this is happening, but it's happening. I, it, uh, it, uh, do you want more hot tips on how to achieve your showbiz dreams? Why not get it from the experts? Introducing. Hang on to someone's butts. Hollywood Handbook Pro Version, featuring exclusive mini episodes that can only be found on Stitcher Premium. That's right. You can now get even more Hollywood Handbook. Maybe you're thinking that uh, that's enough already. No, there's even more, and you're going to take it. You can get even more Hollywood Handbook with Stitcher Premium. Let me, let me read this copy as is. That's right. You can now get even more Hollywood Handbook each with Stitcher Premium. What? Listen along as the boys, Sean Clements and Hayes Davenport, nailed it first time, 
not their, their names aren't even in here, by the way. <laughs> this is almost like somebody wrote this as a troll for them. Listen along as Sean and Hayes do everything from teaser freezers to listener call-ins and even upgrades on Chef Tevin's Chef Tevin's Kinder profile. Chef Kevin's Tinder profile. But Tevin Campbell does have a profile on a Kinder Egg <laughs> social website. Hollywood Handbook is one of my favorite podcasts. Um, it really cracks me up. I laugh out loud. Sean and Hayes are hilarious. You may have heard them on this show. They've done a couple episodes of my show. I've been on their show a few times. It's so it's such a funny show, and I know this is going to be great. So more content from them is a good thing. If you haven't checked out Hollywood Handbook, check it out, and then you will definitely want to check out Hollywood Handbook Pro. Hollywood Handbook Pro version releasing every week starting Wednesday, January 31st. That's that's a couple days from now if you're listening to this when it comes out, which you should be. Only on Stitcher Premium. For a free month of Stitcher Premium, go to stitcherpremium.com. All the words like they sound. Slash handbook. <laughs> stitcherpremium.com slash handbook. Use promo code SPONT. Let them know that you came from Spontanean Nation. Welcome back. To Spontanean Nation, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have procured a location for our improv from Mr. David Reese, and we are ready to reveal that location. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we're in a scene, we want to find out about something that happened in the past. Someone's having a memory, we're learning how something came to be. Anytime there's a flashback, we use this flashback sound effect. Let's say we want to get back from the flashback, gotta get back in time. <laughs> back to where we were, or anytime we want to go into the future, we'll use this flash forward sound effect. Now, this final sound moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene, we want to find out what is happening at the exact same moment somewhere else, only moving in space, not in time. We'll use this meanwhile sound effect. Past. Present. Future. Everyone gets it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to reveal the location for improv provided to us by David Reese, and that location is Ingwe Malmsteen concert. <laughs> That's right, I said Ingwe Malmsteen concert. <laughs> we take you now to Ingwe Malmsteen concert. Hey, you guys want to get out of here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, uh... hey. Those those tickets were a gift, right? Yeah. Okay. My boss, he's like, you're into weird music. I thought you might like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't know me at all. Cool. Well, thanks for inviting me anyway. Could you guys keep it down? I'm trying to watch Ingwe Malmsteen. Oh. oh, we thought we moved to the part of the concert where we didn't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I followed you here. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I'm sorry I've been grating cheese <laughs> here. I, I, just, I get really hungry. I have to eat. My blood sugar dips. I'm so sorry. Are they your favorite band or something? Hey, look. I didn't ask for your whole life story. Okay. <laughs> I just came up here to tell you, Got even it. though you're in the section where no one cares if you talk, yeah. Yeah. if we, you're thinking about moving back down to those great seats that you yeah, had, yeah, no. right in front of me, I would like you to just be respectful of Ingwe Malmsteen. Okay, I just, I'm we so thought, sorry. who Michael? is a person, by the way? Oh, okay. <laughs> But I thought he was up there with the whole band. Yeah, of course he's got yeah, other yeah, yeah. people. So we thought it was the whole band was also his name, like, you know, Dave Matthews Band. Look, whether he might have other people up there okay. with him, he might not. But You're right. <laughs> either way, got it. he's so great, 
He doesn't even, yeah. you okay. wouldn't even notice if there was a band. Maybe well, there is, maybe there okay. isn't. Well, we were just in the cheap seats because we thought we could just kind of chill out and talk and yeah. hang out. And grate your cheese. Sorry, and I'm great so sorry. Cheese. Yeah. Also, I didn't realize we were sitting in front of you. I love your cooking. Yeah, you're amazing. Yeah. Are you about to host a charity auction, Mr. Lucas? <laughs> 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 Why do you ask that? <laughs> oh, you just seem like you're uh, you're dressed so nicely. It seems yeah, like you're about to go you. host thank a charity you. auction. No. 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 <laughs> I wouldn't do that because I <laughs> I hate microphones. Oh. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Got it. I don't like them. Yeah. You know, to be completely honest, we we're hoping that now that you're up here, you can show us how to grate cheese. Grate cheese. <laughs> oh, are you fucking kidding I, I, me? I, I'm hey, sorry. Look. You're right. I come here on my night off. Yeah. To watch Ingwe Malmsteen, yeah, my favorite performer, and then bam, I get asked to grate some cheese. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, we get it, we get it. Yeah. Look, Miss, Mr. Emerald. Uh, Please call me Emerald. <laughs> I, I just, we love your work so much. Yeah. Really. I love your restaurants. Love them. Go to them. Thank you. I'm actually like really happy that we ran into you here because we were thinking of starting our own restaurant. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be barbershop themed. So, when you sit down, you can only book a table of four. Mm -hmm. And your, your order is based on like what uh, vocal part you sing. Yeah. So if it's like the bass, like you just eat like it's ribs. Also, it's also regular barber shop themed. So you sit in a barber's chair and you also have like so a- So four barber's chairs around <laughs> yeah. the table. Yeah. 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 And then Cedric the Entertainer shows up. <laughs> <laughs> It's a concept thing. We've been working yeah. on it a while. We sure. don't even know him yet, but yeah. we'll get him. We'll, we'll get him. We'll get him. I, I'm, you know, there's a few degrees of separation, but I could probably get you in touch with Oh, Cedric. really? You know Cedric? Well, I don't know him personally, What's but I know degrees? people who know him. Who are the degrees? Well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then there's uh, Dame Judy Dench. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he goes. Where did you meet Dame Judy? <laughs> Wow, my first time in London. Me, Emeril Lagos, <laughs> the ce celebrity chef. Bam. <laughs> Excuse me, lady. Uh, where do I see the queen? Do you want someone who's played the queen or do you want the queen, the queen? What? <laughs> well, there's a long line of famous actresses behind me who have all played different queens. They're all... <laughs> They're all very talented. What's that lady doing? <laughs> she's twirling her mustache. What does it look like okay, she's doing? That's what I thought. Indeed. Ew, heavens. <laughs> she's, she's frankly aghast at your question. I'm lugass. Isn't that funny? <laughs> hey, what's your name, British lady? Humor is much more dry. <laughs> what's, your, what's your name, lady? You seem like a cool dame. Well, she is a dame, as a matter of fact. I was asking you about you. What's your name? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm her defense. <laughs> what? You want to talk to her, you have to go through me. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, Mind you, I won't kill anyone. This is a defense situation. I'm only here to defend, not kill. I wasn't assuming you were, but now I'm thinking about it. Would you like to join my post-apocalyptic game of cribbage? <laughs> I'd like to recruit you. You seem like you have nimble fingers. Well, I mean, I am a chef, so uh, I gotta be fast so I don't cut my own fingers off. I bet you taste divine. What? <laughs> I'd like to eat you up with a knife and fork. <laughs> she has the theory that if you make good food, you will taste delicious. I mean, that makes sense, because I gotta taste the good food, so it's in me. <laughs> I gotta say, no deal. All right. Oh, heavens. Guess I'll go find uh, Mario Batali. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and then we became friends. Really? Yeah. Wow. So first, it was, it was so she threatened cool. to eat you. Yeah, yeah. And then you became friends. Classic meat cute. Got it. <laughs> That is pretty cool. I'm sorry we've kept you from the concert so long. You're just so fascinating. That's yeah. all right. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm not real familiar with Ingwe Malmsteen. <laughs> Got it. No? What's like one hit? Yeah, give us a hit. 
No, let's see. <laughs> and has he already played it tonight? He hasn't yet. He, okay. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be an encore. Oh, isn't there always with a Malmsteen show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Ingwe Malmsteen's most famous hit? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably. <laughs> Humans tremble, for God has come to judge. <laughs> you know I, it, right? I don't know it, no, but... Um, I know I, that one. I can... I love it. I could assume. I never knew that was Ingwe. It's an Ingwe Malmsteen, yeah. I used to sing it um, back at my Bible uh, store. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you guys open? Humans tremble when they see you come in. Hey, I just need to buy a tremble. Bible, lady. I'm so sorry. Please okay. go ahead. They're alphabetically organized. <laughs> so they're just all here? Hey, you got that book about throwing shit away? This is a Bible store, but weirdly, yes. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I, are you going to be long? I just, I, um, I'm just really excited. I've been waiting to, to come here for such a long time, and I can't wait for my Bible to choose me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which one is speaking to you? Um... That wooden one? Ah, yes, the wooden Bible. <laughs> Fewer words in it. It's very heavy. It can be used as a weapon if you get into a skirmish. I'm listening. Hello, Hello child. Hello. Would you, would you like to hear the good word of Jesus Christ? You're talking to me, right? Yes. Yes. What's happening with her yes, right now? Yes, please. I don't know. Hey, little girl. Hey. Yeah. Who are you talking to? Talking don't to the tell Bible. them. Don't tell them. Oh. <laughs> that feels weird. Don't you tell them. Number one, you're a stranger. Number two, you're telling me not don't to tell, tell anyone. Them. Don't tell you tell us them. what? Tell us what? Tell us what? Are tell you okay? Us. Take me off the shelf. <laughs> Do you need help? Are you okay? Don't pay for me. Just run out of the store. <laughs> What's happening? I don't Do it. Do it now. Do I it now. I my face. I bought my face. <laughs> So, um, so my question was alphabetical. <laughs> it's, they're all they're all written by the same people. So, and if it's by name, it's gonna be just the same. So these are just shelves of Bibles. Yeah, the whole section is just B. <laughs> right. How'd the song go again? Um, it was like, humans promote at the fit of the God. Wow. Sorry. Is that, is that you? I, I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I've always been. I don't know what you've seen. But is, is that you, you? I am me. And I, except for like in 2009 when someone stole my security uh, oh, I've number. Been there. It is the worst. I've been myself the whole time. Okay. I just heard you singing. I mean, I was here oh, to me? see the show, but I, I heard you singing and it sounded so familiar. It reminded me of when I was a kid and I... No, stop. I came into this place and I thought I was going to get a thing and then I got scared and I left. But that song, it's so familiar. Oh, I don't know. It's just something I've been kicking around. Apparently it belongs to this guy that I wasn't here to see. Well, you said a place. Was it the Bible store? Yeah. Hey, didn't you say you used to own a Bible store? Yeah, you were just talking about that. Wait, did... <laughs> seconds ago? Didn't I just tell the story about this little blonde girl that came in and freaked out at a Bible and ran out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know who you are, miss. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I'm still puzzling over how I came to this show when I forgot that that song was his song. <laughs> I don't know what brought me here. Just a feeling, I guess. A gut feeling. Yeah. How yeah. did we all end up here? I don't know. It's all very confusing at this point. I mean, I, I just woke up here. I woke up here. Are you saying... Hold on a second. 
Yeah. I, I, Are you saying you woke up and beat here? <laughs> I don't feel I have the right to say that, but I feel like I woke up and here I was. Okay. And so, I had an awareness of being here. Right. And I don't know why. That's I got to take like, it on faith. That sounds like you woke up and beat here. <laughs> Like, it sounds like you were here, and when you woke up, you were like, I be here right now. I still now. am. I still be. Doesn't it sound like she woke up and yeah, be here? Yeah, yeah, it sounds like you straight up, you is. <laughs> well, if you need a fourth for your barbershop quartet. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> How did you make that oh, leap? What? Yes, I, I do. Know. I... Wait, you do? You, you do? Yeah, we meet Thursdays at 6.30. <laughs> I grated all this cheese. I hope they come. <laughs> come on, guys. Just Hi. you're here. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. Please, just <laughs> yeah. Just dribble it in your mouth. <laughs> okay. Don't let her know that I'm here. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you can be. You all right? Don't don't let her know. She mustn't know that I'm here. All right. Hey. Yes. You're doing that thing again like you did in the past. I'm fine. Eat more cheese. Act natural. Oh, you like the cheese, huh? I got it from this little farm. Uh, so I was thinking you could be the, you could be the bass, right? Because I think it'd be really unexpected because you're like, because I can't sing low. But like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm in. Okay. It sounds great. So like, you just laid out a bass line and however low that is, even if it's really high, as long as we're higher than you, okay. you're still the bass. Oh, wow, yeah, that cool. totally makes sense. Hi, I'm here for the barbershop quartet. <laughs> oh, Emerald. <my>. Yes, <laughs> I have a bit of a cold, I hope that's all right. Oh. <laughs> how, how is he gonna be higher than me? I don't understand. Emerald. Do yeah. That. So uh, this is, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your oh, name. Oh, I remember you. You were the little girl from the Bible store. <laughs> Cassandra. Yeah. Cassandra. You were holding that microphone then, too. What are you talking about? <laughs> Nothing. She's been bugging out ever since she got here. Too much cheese, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Look, Emerald. She's going to be our baseline because it's super punk rock and crazy. And then, however low her shit is, we're just going to be higher than it. And that's the math. And my shit's not going to be that low. Hey, sorry I'm late. Hey, my brother. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm embarrassed. I never asked you your name before. Oh, yeah. I'm Jeremy. Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy Remember Brothers. Remember me, Emerald, from the concert? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, I have a cold. That's why I sound like... Got it. <laughs> All right. So like I was just saying, she's going to be the baseline, but it's going to be kind of high, and then we're going to stack on top. I think you should probably be the tenor, so you have, like, the highest melody. Sounds good. Great. And you and I, no one remembers what we do, because we just smash some shit together in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool? All right, so what should our first song be that we should practice? How about the alphabet? Great. <laughs> Everybody knows it. Great. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So, well, I guess I'll just start. Um, yeah, start like with real like, well, or start where you're gonna start. I start with B. Start when you want to start. I mean, you should start with the first letter of the alphabet. Don't listen to her. Start where you want to start in the alphabet. <laughs> I'm, I'm. It, this, this is punk rock. I feel like I should start with the letter. What are you looking? G. At? G. I'm gonna start with G. Okay. So, great. Yeah. Start with G. Wait to the the alphabet. Um, oh, Emerald. <laughs> oh, Emerald. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. asked because I have a Do cold. Your cold. Yeah. Your voice? Yeah. A little bit from the cold. Yeah. You're cold. <laughs> anyway, so I feel like I should start with G because I'm cool. like, gee, this is a crazy time. Great. I'm sure if I were Judy Dench, I would start at M, but. <laughs> yeah. Start wherever you want. Okay. And then we're just going to layer on top. G stands for God. Okay. Are you, Are you right? okay? G H I J K L N O P Q R S T U V I'm sorry, I'm sorry. W S Y N Z. Am I singing too low? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Now I know. I think Emerald's having a... 
I don't feel so good. I tried to sing high and... Uh, oh, no. This is cold. Do you need to sit down? Yeah, maybe I do. Wait don't, a minute. Just on the floor. Hold on. <laughs> Thanks. This is my cool hip loft space for rehearsals. Yeah. I don't have chairs, don't man. Have chairs? I'm oh, punk I rock. Sit down on the Wait ground, Are, I guess. How, how long have you had this cold? Oh, uh, let me see. Went to the Ingwit Malmsteen concert. Okay. I forgot to bring my scarf. <laughs> Walked around the streets all night long, just thinking about my life. <laughs> Were there any other people around you who were sick? Were there people who uh, seemed to be lying on the ground and weren't moving anymore? Oh, tons. Might... <laughs> tons? Yeah. yeah, tons. They were all over the place. Oh, my God. Do you think we're the last humans alive? Probably. I, I mean... <laughs> when do you think they'll realize... <laughs> What? What? When do you think they'll realize that they're the last humans? Uh, probably pretty soon. I mean, at this okay, point, well, because I, just, I, I don't know, but I mean... I'm like, you're the one that said just post up outside and wait for them to finish the rehearsal yeah. before we, like, eat them, so... Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, eventually they're just going to be like, huh, where are other people to, like, shut this place down or yeah. anything? Or they're going to try to, like, order, like, some... Like Thai food or something. Yeah, yeah. They seem like they're gonna order Thai. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm um, getting hungry. <laughs> hold on. What? Let me ask you one more question. <laughs> Amidst all of the stuff that you saw, did you see any bickering zombies? <laughs> Like gently yeah. bickering, like uh, get to the point bickering, uh, like a sitcom yeah. neighbor duo. Yeah. Because the prophecy. Hey, I, actually, because I, I was late, I I, I saw a couple of people. They seemed like people, but they were bickering. Were they hunched over and raspy? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Did they say anything about Thai food? Did they say anything about Thai food? Yeah. And I, I didn't listen to the because conversation. Because that's code for typhoid. Listen. Uh, Thai food equals typhoid. Like Thai, like Thai food and typhoid, typhoid are the same thing? Whoa. I don't feel so good. <laughs> Wait a minute. Emerald. Bam. Oh, God. I Wait. feel so weird that I'm glad he was the first to go. Wait. Did he get it from Thai food? Can you Did get typhoid? From Thai food? From Thai food. I don't know. I don't know. I my limited knowledge of the prophecy just say that you do know, right but you won't the tell edge them. Of my knowledge. You do. I, you do. You can. You will. No, you will. no, you no. Hey, listen. <laughs> say, say that you do know, but you won't tell them. I do know, but I won't tell you. Nice. Why wouldn't you tell us? Why? We're the last three people alive. I think we've decided. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to assume that than to assume that we're not. Why won't I tell you? Well, I will not tell you for the simple fact. Fact. And you're this on, is... You're on your own. That you are on your own. Oh, you got me. Wait. Look, I thought you wanted to be part of something, Bible girl. Yeah. You came... You found us. I, I still do. You found us at that Ingmar Bergman concert, and you followed us here. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for making it a name I can remember. Yeah. And then you said you wanted to be in this barbershop, and now that we found out we're the only people alive, you're bailing on us? No, 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 no. Don't spin around in anguish. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. I'm just so frustrated. I, I finally found people I can hang out with other than the whole Oh. 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 Zombie now. What? No, uh, Emerald. What is he saying? Uh, so, I, I'm gonna die first, and then I'll come back. <laughs> oh no! Did you just hit him with a rock really hard? I hit him with a rock really hard. Other end. Uh, oh. Uh, Wait, go! Wait a minute, what? Go! 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 go. I don't know what to do. Hello? Hello? What do I do? Hello? Hello? Oh, sorry.
sorry. I was. I'm sorry. I was busy. No, don't don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't. Did you get bit? Oh boy. <laughs> How many do you think are still human? Um. Okay, the one keeps screaming. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like one. One human. And then maybe the other guy's voice sounded like that already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He so, had a cold. Yeah, so it's hard to tell. Yeah. Uh, you think we should bust in there or let's, like? Let's wait it out. We've been right. pretty good out here. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know what I was thinking about though. Now uh, we're not gonna oh, be able to eat. I'm sorry. Hey. Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> we're outside this uh, barbershop rehearsal space. Oh. Oh, I thought it was a barbershop restaurant. It's both. It's both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a concept. Are you guys zombies? It's both. Uh, mo- are we? Are we? Are you zombies? I think I am. <laughs> but... <laughs> Say no more. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> I recognize that guy. Uh, he did a magic show earlier tonight. <laughs> That guy did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind of show is it? It was, he was just a magician. He was, uh, you know, doing some bits as well. Huh. Anyway. Now I know why they sound like this. This is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. I feel like Wait garbage. A minute. Uh, out there. You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. We love you, Brooklyn. We love you. Goodbye forever until next week. This is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in Presente. Hey, everyone. Don't forget to check out Bitch Sesh, a Real Housewives breakdown podcast right here on Earwolf. Every week, hilarious hosts Casey Wilson and Danielle Schneider dish on the season's wildest moments, answer all your burning Housewives questions, drink Housewives branded wine, and bring on super special guests like Lauren Lapkus, Adam Pally, June Diane Raphael, and more. You don't have to be a Housewives fan. This show will still become one of your favorites. Listen to Bitch Sesh every week on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everyone, are you a fan of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills uh, or Atlanta or New Jersey or any Bravo show in general? If you said yes, then I got a show for you. It's Bitch Sesh, a Real Housewives breakdown show. And even if you're not, this show is still for you. It's kind of like how did this get made for reality TV and gossip. They answer all your burning Housewives questions. They drink Housewives branded wine and bring on some super special guests like Lauren Lapkus, Adam Pally, June Diane Raphael, and more. So even if you're not a Housewives fan, this show might become one of your faves because it's like reading uh, Star Magazine or something like that. It's just, it's just, you get into it. I'm into it. I love it. Listen to Bitch Sesh every Thursday, soon to be every Wednesday on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, Colin Anderson, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com.